Hello, my friends and neighbors. Uh, last night, uh, <laughs> I watched um, Piranha 3 Double D. I don't know what the hell to call it. Um, since it's not in 3D uh, whatsoever, I don't really think the 3 uh, Double D, well, the Double D certainly uh, is fitting. But the 3 in front of it uh, for watching a 2D version of a you know the first sequel um, it's very confusing so I'm going to call it Piranha 2 uh, and even though there's already a Piranha 2 uh, James Cameron's first film I'll call this Piranha 2 2012 um, just because I think Piranha 3 Double D is a terrible title um, but it's kind of fitting for the film um, being as the film is not that great. Uh, you know, I don't really have the willpower to say no to this. Uh, you know, I see this on a, on a shelf at Blockbuster and, well, I just gotta see it. You know, there's just no way. Um, first of all, I love the first one. Um, well, I've loved all the Piranha movies, um, going back to the Roger Corman original. Uh... But the one Piranha that came out in 2010 uh, was awesome. Um, I loved it. Uh, this is not that film. Um, there are a few actors uh, who are in the first one that are in this one. And I guess technically uh, the first one was a uh, Weinstein Brothers uh, production. So they are, have returned to produce, uh, executive produce, that is. But there is no artistic connection uh, between the first film and this film. No, uh, no regular producers, no writers, certainly not the director. Um, just a few of the actors uh, came back. But there's, again... There's absolutely no artistic connection other than the Weinstein brothers sitting on top of a pile of money somewhere. Uh, you know, nothing. There, this this film is totally unlike uh, the first one um, in pretty much every way. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and give it a three. Um, I think <laughs> since it's uh, Piranha Three Double D, I'll go ahead and give it a three. Um, it's kind of like two movies. Uh, the first one is semi-good. It's interesting. It, it's got some mystery to it. And then all of a sudden, like halfway through, it turns into a film that, uh, well, I had no idea what was going on. I, the, the characters become, like, totally confusing uh, the the plot um, stops and, and starts and, and characters disappear and uh, you know I I just didn't know what was going on for like the last half uh, none of it really made any logical sense to me um, I mean I still had some fun uh, the first half is, you know, fun, is, is, is okay, you know, um, but then it just goes off the tracks, I don't know what happens, uh, and, I mean, there's still some cheese and some element of fun at, at, in, in the last half, uh, but it's, it's mostly just, I'm just mostly confused, just wondering what's going on and, and why the characters are doing this, um, you know, it, it seems like uh, we're set up for this. If if you remember the first film, if you remember Piranha, uh, there's probably a 20-minute scene of just pure carnage that seems like, you know, half the film builds to, and then they deal with this uh, carnage, and then just this, you know, this denouement and, and dealing with all of that afterwards. Here it's like leading up to they want to do the same thing. They very much want to do the same thing. 
Uh, so they're building this tension and they're leading to this uh, inevitable slaughter. And then when it comes time, nothing really happens. And, uh, you know, everyone could be easily saved. There's no tension. There's no risk. Uh, there's, uh, you know... I, you know, I, I still don't even know what happens. You know, I, I'm not... I, you know, characters disappear. Um, characters live when I... You you thought that they were dead. Like, one second ago. I mean, they were clearly dead. And then now they're back to life. And wondering what's going on. Um, uh, <laughs> here's the kicker. Here's the kicker of the film. It's 70 minutes long. It's one hour and 10 minutes long. Uh, and half of that, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, <laughs> how they make a 70 minute film half incomprehensible, I mean, it's, it's almost like an achievement. Uh, I still have, you know, fun you know, with it. Uh, I, I love piranhas as an animal. It's one of my favorite animals. Uh, I even had, like, one of those freeze-dried piranha that were huge in, like, the late 80s and early 90s. Um, I had one of those. I just love piranha. I've always wanted a live piranha. Um, so, again, <laughs> it's just, like, uh, something I kind of want to see. Um... Let me tell you the cast here. I've got to read some of them. Um, okay. Danielle Panabaker. She was fine. Matt Bush. David Keckner uh, from Tipton, Missouri. Uh, David Keckner. Always great. I mean, David Keckner is fantastic. <laughs> I, uh, I, <laughs> um, Chris Zelka. Katrina Bowden, Gary Busey. Gary Busey is in this. Uh, Christopher Lloyd and David Hasselhoff. Uh, Ving Rhames is also in there from the uh, first film, as well as the... Uh, well, I don't know his name. He's on The League. He's a comedian. He's got the big gap in his teeth. I think uh, uh, he's also uh, has a, an Adult Swim series. Um, he's in the film again. Uh... All of the acting is is bad. I mean, well, I mean, it's okay. I never blame the actors, you know. Uh, it's the director's choice. Um, a lot happens in editing. Uh, you know, sometimes there's not there, you know, not much in the writing. I mean, this is just a, I mean, it's just a bad movie. You know, it's just a bad movie. Uh, but I think it's three worthy because it's fun. I mean, I laughed a lot. I, you know, again, had a giant smile plastered on my face for most of the film. Most of the film. Seriously, like, the last 20 minutes is just confusion. And there's just nothing but wondering what the fuck is happening. Um, let's see. Directed by John Gulager. I'm not sure of that name. Uh, written by Patrick Melton, Marcus Dunstan, and Joel Sasson. Uh, I'm not familiar with any of those names. Uh, I'm not sure of her name, but she's the uh, she's the girl from Thirty Rock. She's the beautiful blonde secretary um, on Thirty Rock. Uh, she was also in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, uh, where she was abnormally beautiful. Um, here she's in this film and she's good she's definitely well there's a lot of eye candy I guess but she's definitely the prettiest girl in the movie uh, she's really good and she's absolutely gorgeous um, <laughs> she's the character who dies and then like immediately later is alive again like really uh, she dies and then is alive again um, 
Uh, Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff is insane. You know, as an actor, but the character he's he's portraying is insane. A lot of the film, again, I can't stress enough, the last 20 minutes of this film where it just abandons any kind of sense of reason uh, and sense of reality uh, is almost like a sight to behold. Uh, just, just things happen and you're just like, what? What? Um, at least I was. Um, I don't really know what else to say I, other than you know, I don't really know if you need to rent this. You can wait for, you know, to see it on TV somewhere. I guess if you're having some type of, you know, social situation uh, where bad movies are, are required and, you know, you're uh, imbibing, you know, you, uh, you may want to watch this. But... If you're just looking for quality entertainment, you need to look elsewhere uh, because you'll just get greatly irritated by this. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, the piranha look kind of cool. I mean, somewhat. They're just the piranha from the first film, but, uh, eh, you know, whatever. Um... There's some quality death in it, I guess, here and there. Some of the deaths that make no sense whatsoever or reason uh, to happen. Um, you know, I don't... You know, whatever. I've, I've already talked now for 12 minutes about this film, and that's probably too long as it is. Uh, so that's Piranha... <laughs> Piranha 3 Double D. <laughs> and it's, it's a 3. Thank you very much.